expert right. is that we come together. And Cass Sunstein, as you mentioned, wrote and uh, publicized many uh, articles on how to manipulate and take over conspiracy theories. He had uh, said ban, you could ban them, you could create attacks, uh, you can engage them in counter speech and through counterintelligence uh, and also you know, manipulation, marginalization, and, and any and every effort they can. We talk about cognitive infiltration specifically, yeah, where you go out and pose as someone. And, the, and the, I mean, here's an example. They will send out letters or emails where I attack some pastor or I say something or someone says I did, and then the person gets mad at me thinking, you know, if you don't see me say it, directly or if it sounds like it's edited it's not me and it doesn't hurt us it shows how successful we are the point is if i could actually send people to us and then, and then they find out it's not true so a lot of these tactics are going to backfire that's the good news let's go ahead and talk to kevin in canada you're on the air thanks for holding hey alex this is your 17 uh, year listener from canada here i'd like to give you uh, a comparison along with my uh, my theory of what's going to happen my comparison is the relationship between the United States and Canada is a lot like the Book of Mice and Men. And it really seems that America can't keep their hands off the nice and shiny thing. And Canada, in turn, has to somehow come up with an excuse or somehow bail you out. Um, I'm really wondering, instead of blaming the politicians, when is every American going to look in the mirror and realize that it's not the politicians' fault, it's not even the globalists? Five percent, just like you've said before in your show, five percent is all it takes to overthrow. That's what happened in 1776, and we're trying to have a cultural revolution of liberty. The system is set up for a physical confrontation, and we'd probably win that one as well. Uh, it's just that we're trying everything we can to try to fix this peacefully. Do you have any other comments? Well, the other thing I'll leave you with is uh, I heard you uh, quote Aldous Huxley, so I figured I'd go and read one of his books. Actually, I listened to an interview on BBC in which he said that he could see a time in which people love their servitude. I think we're there. Well, sure. We've played the clips of Huxley explaining the, that they were going to build this world. He wrote Brave New World in 32, and you read it today, and it's actually coming true. Well, he said, this is our plan. He was part of a British government breeding program that was never classified with the uh, with the five other families. Most of his siblings and people died. They were uh, his brother went on to run the UN. I mean, he, the, these people, it's just, just so incredible. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Hagman and Hagman, uh, I'm going to skip this network break and, and go right to the bottom of the hour with you guys. Um, I want to go to Chris and others that are holding, but at the bottom of the rabbit hole from your research, what's there? Uh, what's there is uh, the, the ultimate objective, of course, Alex, is the uh, very simply a one world, one world order, a one world financial system, one world religion, and a one world economic system. End of story. And, and, and that's what's at the to, to, as far as our research is concerned, that's what the end game objective is. And we've got to think bigger. Everyone has got to think bigger. Every, the attack yesterday at the synagogue in Jerusalem, that's part and parcel to this in, in many respects. What's going on domestically and will be in Ferguson, part and parcel to it. The taking down of the U.S. dollar. None of this is happening by accident. What about, the, what about the attack on the parliament in Ottawa? That guy looked like a total cutout as well. Again, we're not saying terrorism isn't real. The globalists are letting these people attack. And we shouldn't give our freedoms up because somebody goes and does that. No, not at all. Not at all. No, absolutely. And, you know, I, I think at the basis, I, I'm a Christian. And uh, everything has been explained in the, in the Bible, the, the attributes of the people, the falling away, uh, as one of the, the last callers pointed out, you know, it is the response. It's our responsibility as, as uh, citizens of as humans. The, right. And as humans. Well, you said it, at the bottom of the rat hole is Satan. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. It's good versus evil. And it is a, uh, you know, we see the, they're bringing out the animal nature or human nature of man rather than uplifting them to the spirit leading them and pointing them to the spiritual nature which is what we are all um of God. able to be right. but they're pulling us down to the to, to basic animal instinct through uh, our own human nature well said that is exactly what is at the bottom of the rabbit hole is is a spirit a system whether you believe in, in spirits or not 
a manifestation through human interaction, through archetypes, if you will, that wants to kill, steal, and destroy and dumb people down so it can control them. Uh, it's the ultimate form of selfishness, and it's truly disgusting. Chris in South Carolina, you're on the air. Welcome. Yes, sir. I appreciate you for taking my call. Uh, I, I was, I've been thinking about Ferguson, and I've also been thinking about how this all plays into a bigger thing. I believe Ferguson in itself is nothing more. You've often said that these guys are a scientific uh, science, scientists that do scientific experiments. They're using this to understand how a martial law will work on a larger scale. And to condition us that the martial law comes and goes and returns and maintains order so we will accept the rollout of the international stabilization force that is in the RAND Corporation document. This is all planned. And, 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 and that goes along with the, uh, the amnesty thing because, see, the amnesty thing and the uh, health care thing go together because they're all linked back to the U.N. And if... The only way to get us to accept it is to bring in a martial law, and because we're already in it, but but to get us to accept it, that's right. You see what I'm saying? Well, so I mean, it's the Henry Kissinger quote uh, to the CFR, and it was a trial commission meeting, but they put it in the CFR Foreign Affairs publication back in '91. He said, "Look, Americans would never accept UN troops in Los Angeles unless there was the right crisis." But once there is the right crisis, they would accept it. I mean, you can search a stability police force for the United States that they first put out back in the 90s. And then James Jones, the head of uh, the uh, Security Council a few years ago, put it out again with, with an update. I mean, it's, it's checkpoints on every corner. It's secret police. It's people being disappeared. I mean, it's East Germany on PCP and steroids. And they're just rolling this baby out. And the average cop's as good as pumpkin pie. On average, I mean, I'll be honest. There are a lot of bad cops out there. It's like they're bad people, but it doesn't matter because they're gonna they're they're putting in the system where the nice cop doesn't know. They just say pick you up. They bring you to the place where you get put in a black van and taken away. And then it's kind of like we don't know. They go away in a black van, folks. We're here. That's what this Ebola cover-up is about. They are just simulating and testing and probing and going. Hey. Infraguard. Preachers are here to tell you to go to the camp when you're told. I told people about that four years before it was in the news. Then it was in local news. I mean, they're really probing. Great points, Chris. Anything else? Yes. I, one more thing. Um, you know how they have referred to the Ebola virus as the zombie virus. If you just type in ZMAT, what comes up is zombie military attack team. Why would they name that that? And then I started thinking about some other stuff when you said how it changes the DNA. And so I did a cross-reference because I had seen something with something called Funvax and VMAT2. And there is a cross-connection. I went and got documents. I was going to send them to you, and all of a sudden my computer went down. Crazy. Well, let me just say this. We first reported this about five years ago. People didn't believe us, but a year later it started coming out. They were Marines and Army were trying to mow down looters. And, and just and mow down masses of starving people in America. The troops freaked out about it, so they said, oh, they're zombies now. And so that's how they cover the troops training to mow down American citizens. See, it's all psyops. It's all psycho psychological warfare. Uh, thank you. Uh, guys, you want to comment on the uh, zombie kill training going on all over the world right now from Japan to the U.S.? Well, I, absolutely. You know, and the word zombie, uh, people think in their mind, you know, some kind of... Uh, half dead, half alive, human, you know, mindless person. Well, it is not referring to that, uh, some type of mutated person. It They're dehumanizing you like Hitler would say Jews were rats or Jews were vampires. They're dehumanizing everybody. Go ahead. Yeah, and because of this materialist mentality in society we have, uh, people have been hollowed out inside because they have been uh, too consumed with the uh, tangible things of the world that they can, you know, get their hands on and want. And when they re refer to zombies, they're talking about when when the everything breaks down, the mindless, the millions of mindless Americans That's right. not know where to look. And they're telling you you're a zombie. They're dehumanizing you. They're preparing you. But they know 
Within about seven days, most people will steal. Within 10 days, most people will kill for food. Within 15, 98% of people in Pentagon studies, you can look up the study, will cannibalize. 98%. And I got to be honest, if my kids are starving and somebody's already dead, I'm going to probably start cooking. If, if, if I think I can get through it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and if you think you're going to get through the emergency, you will end up eating people. And this is the all I know is they're doing the training, and it's insane. We just showed the news article on screen. I mean, you cannot. I say this stuff, and used to folks didn't know how to search engine something quick, so they thought I was nuts. Now they can look it up. I mean, it is just crazy. Let's go to Sledgehammer in Utah. Sledgehammer, you're on the air. Yes, hello. Hello. Welcome, uh, brother. I was wondering what everybody's. Uh, opinion is of ISIS and what they're waiting for. They didn't strike on 9-11. Are they going to try to blemish our holidays with terrorist attacks? Uh, and are they going to try to hijack the Ferguson, uh, the Ferguson protests and expound on that? Well, there are Muslim radical sleeper cells all over the country. They've been brought in on purpose by criminals in our government because when they attack, They'll be rock stars in their country. Their families will get paid off by the Saudi Arabian demon government. And then we will have our rights taken by the very system. And the cops will think they're taking our rights to protect us when ISIS is openly run by the New World Order. The difference is we're decompartmentalizing the police and others, and they're waking up. I mean, they're waking up big time. Um, I appreciate your call. We're going to move quick, Sledgehammer. Uh, Doug, uh, what's your take on what I just said? Uh, 100%, Alex, but uh, ISIS is a creation of Western intelligence, of American CIA, British uh, intelligence services, as well as France, Qatari, Saudi Arabia. And, and, and the objective here it, with right, ISIS, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, look, um, when you've got the Council on American Islamic Relations uh, in, in infusing themselves into the protests in Ferguson, that is a microcosm of ISIS in, in, what they're doing on a world level, okay? So they're being managed. ISIS is being managed. Our military essentially gave the keys to the Toyota Tundras parked over there in the Middle East to, to ISIS. We created ISIS. We funded ISIS. We are still doing it, and they are here in America. That's not to scare anyone, but that's just to alert people to say, look. The we, sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. Yeah, they just repackaged the, the, they wanted to bomb Syria a year ago. They couldn't do it. They repackaged it so there was a perceived threat, and now they have the, the exactly. green line. Yep. All right, gentlemen, let's take a couple more calls. Joseph in Colorado, thanks for calling. You're on the air. I'm glad you brought up the U.N. Treaty. Yes, Alex, thanks for having me on. Um, I was listening to you and another gentleman, I forget his name, uh, I think it was last week, and you were talking about something about December 24th, about uh, America signing the U.N. treaty or something. To yeah, Obama, well, I mean, the U.N. says it goes into effect, then Obama says he will implement, regardless of Congress. The Senate has threatened him, basically, with impeachment if he tries it. The problem is they never live up to that. So, yes, they're officially going to try to implement it next year. Now, do you think it's actually going to go through? or uh, They don't care. It doesn't have to pass Congress, according to Obama. See, that's the whole point. He says he'll take your guns because he feels like it. He'll put our troops under U.N. control because he feels like it. He'll fund ISIS because he feels like it. Uh, he will open the borders because he feels like it. There's the headline. Merry Christmas. U.N. declares arms trade treaty to go into effect December 24th. And that's out of a New American magazine uh, out of uh, from Joe Wolverton. We should get Joe Wolverton on this week. Go ahead. Yeah, and what I think is uh, going to happen, though, uh, for 2015, I think they're, uh, I think they're using the Ebola uh, basically, uh, I think they're really going to try to uh, put people in the FEMA camps and everything starting uh, 2015. I think they're going to declare martial law because of the Ebola, and I think we're just going to lose all our rights really soon. Well, they're certainly already taking them all, and but there is a big awakening to respond to it. So for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. I'll have to get to uh, Motorhead, Danny... Kelly and Carl and others after we talked to our reporters, Jakari Jackson and Joe Biggs in Ferguson. Uh, we're going to get the latest intel on what they've discovered. They're out there freezing their butts off. Uh, and then we'll finish up with your calls and some other news that's been breaking at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. But tomorrow in Vegas, Obama, to make a statement on immigration Thursday night, they say to announce his executive orders. We'll see what happens. He said no troops to fight ISIS, and then he's sending them probably to actually put their shoes on for them. Uh, Hagman and Hagman, thank you so much for the time, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Thank God you. Bless. All right, we need to get you back more often every month or so. We'll get you guys on the nightly news, too. Hagman and Hagman.com, really great guys.
Great research. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv are our sites. We'll be right back with our reporters on the ground in Ferguson awaiting the verdict in the freezing witch cold. Stay with us. We're on the march.